1 billion people in the world today have no access to all Simpson roads. They live in poverty, we know. Um, they have no way to uh, interact with local markets. They have no way to get health-related goods and services. And basically, they are condemned to living in the cycle of poverty. Another scenario is that there are 3.5 billion people living in overpopulated, wealthy cities and megacities. Congestion is a big problem. We have billions of dollars wasted in lost productivity and fuel. In the first case, it is assumed that it will take developing countries 50 years to catch up building roads, assuming that their governments will have the money to invest in this infrastructure. In this case, in the developed world case, we are just keeping building more and more infrastructure, and it doesn't seem like a sustainable thing to do. So, we came with a solution. And what I'm about to show you, we believe, is the next paradigm shift in transportation. It is a network, and it comprises flying vehicles, landing stations, and a routing software. We call it Maternet. It is an ultra flexible, automated logistics and transportation network that can move things in the same way that the internet moves bits of information. Let me tell you more about the technology so you can start connecting the dots. This is a drone, an unmanned aerial vehicle, or how we call them, flying robots. These uh, can carry today two kilograms, over 20 kilometers, totally autonomously, using GPS and sensors. These drones know where they are and know where they're going, and they fly at 400 feet. They fly to and from landing stations. Landing stations provide known and safe locations where these drones can take off and land safely. They also exchange batteries and packages automatically. So in case one drone needs to cover 40 kilometers, it just needs to hop in one ground station, exchange a battery, and go on and on. The third component of the technology is our routing software. With it, we can track and monitor in real time what the whole system is carrying, what is the payload that is carrying, where they're going, the diagnostics of the whole systems, the batteries. And we can disclose this information in real time to aviation authorities so they know at any given time where we're flying and what these drones are containing. We are not making drones not only drones. What we're doing is building local transportation networks using flying vehicles. We are enabling communities to leapfrog road infrastructure that is costly and inefficient. And lastly, we are creating better access to goods through a low-cost distribution network. The cost is one of the things that when we realized, we said, this is the next big thing. To move two kilograms over 20 kilometers, the cost is only 24 cents of dollar. And of these 24 cents, only four cents are energy. Imagine today turning on your car and driving it 20 kilometers away. There is no way that the only thing you can spend is four cents of gas. What is behind this cost are some breakthroughs. So, Two years ago, when everybody was talking about using drones for aerial filming, we thought that was good, but we were thinking, this is a transportation vehicle. This is not just a vehicle with a camera. We started talking about this, and people will laugh. How can you start moving things with such a small vehicle? But we understood something. Number one, drones might be the biggest invention in transportation technology after the, inter the internal combustion engine. Why? Because for the first time, we have a vehicle that is 90% software and 10% hardware. And because these vehicles are very small and they can carry small payloads, the weight of the vehicle and the weight of the payload are very similar. So you have a five pounds vehicle carrying a four or almost five pound payload, 
no human on board of the vehicle. So it is very efficient to move things, and it costs very little energy. This is how one of our uh, flights in Dominican Republic and Haiti looks like. We went uh, to Dominican Republic and Haiti in 2012 to conduct our first field trials to understand if this was real, if this notion of having networks of autonomous vehicles to do transportation was even viable. Uh, we worked with aviation authorities and with um, ministries of health to deliver medicines, in this case, over a refugee camp in Haiti. And we also delivered chocolate for the kids, so they loved it. Um, so this concept that we have that this technology is bad because we have seen the bad things that this technology has done in uh, countries in conflict, kids and the new generations, they, they have not seen that. They are not afraid of these vehicles, and because we are designing a vehicle from the ground up that is totally uh, doing transportation and nothing else, you are not afraid of these vehicles. So it's a great idea, big thinking, taking the latest technology to the places where it's needed the most. But why are we doing this? This is the only reason that keeps me awake at night. Uh, I am an immigrant woman, a government lawyer, building a technology company in Silicon Valley. It's not easy. So one of the reasons why we are doing this is because we believe that the most drastically disruptive technology will be created by people institutions and organizations that wants to solve the world's greatest challenges, problems that decade after decade we have not been able to solve. Because are we going to leave one billion people centuries behind? What does that say about us as a civilization? So that is one of the reasons. Another reason is that we believe that creating wealth and doing good are not opposites. So if we're able to rethink infrastructure, redistribute the power, talk with decision makers and tell them we're going to shake a little bit who is benefiting from building roads, we think that, that it will be a power shift. Especially because when one government decides that they will not build a road to connect an isolated community, they are condemning this community to live in the cycle of poverty forever. And this is not government's decision. This is people's decisions. And we owe this to the world. We owe something better to the world. So what are we doing? We are enabling routes that are sustainable. We are creating life-saving routes so people can move around diagnostics, medicines, medical supplies, vaccines, and save people's lives. We're also extending the operational capability of remote clinics that otherwise cannot provide all these services. We are also creating uh, value-generating routes so we can connect local farmers and local retailers to their nearest local markets. And this is a bi-directional relationship. They can send something and get something back. Lastly, what we are creating are trusted routes. Imagine networks in which you could share things and move uh, things in the same way that today you share pictures and information. So what we have created is something that we think will reposition developing countries to be at the forefront of what the next uh, generation of transportation should look like. Because even though the risk of using these vehicles today is high, because the technology is not super reliable yet, the reward to use them is higher. So imagine what we did with telecommunications. Many countries in Africa, instead of having to uh, put uh, wires, they just leapfrog to use wireless communications, and then ha they have wireless antennas. So we think we can do the same with this technology that we're presenting. This is what we think we are doing at Maternet. This is what we believe. And the fact that we're creating a system 
that sits between the road and the internet and can do for atoms what the internet is doing for uh, information, we think it's mind-blowing and we think we can give it a try and see what happens in the world when we implement it. Thank you very much. <laughs>